Hey everybody, John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis. In today's video, we're gonna cover a topic that is such a struggle for many of you, that's holding you back from becoming the best server you can be. And that's really transitioning from serving with a forehand grip and moving to a true continental grip. So in today's lesson, I'm gonna give you a lot of ideas on how to make that transition, get your serve so it performs at a much higher level so that you can really play your best tennis. You know, the reason why most tennis players when they first start serve with the, with the forehand grip is simply because it makes sense. It's sort of intuitive because when you serve with a forehand grip, which is like an eastern grip where my palm is on the, on the same plane as the string bed, it just seems to make sense because the strings face the ball for a long time. It's easy to make contact and it's easy to get the ball to go in the direction that you'd like it to go. I haven't served like this in a while, so it's kind of weird for me, but that's the forehand grip and it makes it easy in the beginning to get the ball in the box, but it's very, very limiting. And the reason it's so limiting is because the only way I can really make this work is if my elbow is in front and my strings are behind me here and my hands behind me and my strings just face the ball all the way. And all I can do is swing from my elbow, okay? So yes, you can get your serve in the box and yes, you can have fun and yes, you can play, but it's really gonna limit you because you can't create much power and you can't create much spin. It doesn't allow you to activate a full motion that we're going to explore next and show you how to really develop. The other limitation of the forehand grip is that it really requires you to face the net, which means you really can't get your body and your rotation of your core into the serve. So I have to face the net because that really matches the grip and the, and the strings facing the target. So I'm going to go this way and there it is. If I had a if I turn sideways here and I had a forehand grip, which we're gonna to get to next, I would never be able to serve in that direction. I would be more comfortable serving to the side fence. So the first big adjustment we're gonna make besides the grip is we're gonna to have to match the grip change with a stance, okay? So when you're serving now with a continental grip, you've gotta get yourself set up sideways. If you've been standing facing the net now and you go to a continental grip, you're naturally gonna be hitting the ball off to the left. So we need to set up our alignment so the alignment of our body matches the change in our grip position that we can actually comfortably hit the ball towards the target. So next up, let's just describe and define what the continental grip is versus the forehand grip. And again, when I talk about the forehand grip, I think of the racket, the strings of the racket and the racket face and the palm of my hand being on the same angle or same plane. So it's like this, this is how I hit my forehand. And the continental grip is, is a change where your hand moves approximately a quarter away around the handle so that instead of having the palm on the back, the palm now rotates to the top so that I can create a straight line from the shoulder to the tip of the racket. It's also called a hammer grip. So if you envision this being a hammer in my hand, this being a, a nail, I'm gonna hit that nail with the head of the hammer and it puts my hand in that exact position I would have if I were actually hitting a hammer. Now your first thought might be, well, if, I'm, if I've got a hammer grip, why would I want to hit the ball with the edge of the racket? And I understand that. And that's the part of the grip and the motion that, that is not intuitive. But at the end of this lesson, you'll have a full understanding of how to use the grip and how to create the motion to generate power and spin. So just stick with me here. But this is the continental grip that you want to get to. So if we have, a, if we have our, our new position with our stance so that we're sideways to our target and we have a continental grip, we're well on our way. Okay. So this is really where you wanna be. Now, initially, you're gonna feel like you're not gonna be able to get your strings squared up on the ball. So in this next segment, we're gonna go through the motion and show you how this grip really allows you to activate a full range of motion and create a performance-oriented serve that's gonna help you grow as a tennis player. So one of the key things that you need to understand to get the motion right and use the continental grip is that the motion of the serve is very similar in many ways to throwing. So we're gonna work on some throwing skills. So when we throw naturally, you can see that the first thing I do is I turn sideways to my target and my elbow gets behind me in alignment with my shoulders and it allows me to rotate around and release the ball. And when I'm doing that, my arm is coming around, my elbow is leading, and then my arm extends. And when it extends, it actually rotates. So there's an internal rotation from the shoulder that is causing the whole arm to rotate. And that is the magical movement that makes the continental grip come to life and makes it make sense. And you have to understand this in order for the continental grip to work for you. Versus uh, the forehand grip serve, where you literally just kind of put the elbow in front and you just push through from the elbow on out. There is no extension or rotation. And that's why you probably struggle with getting a nice extension on your serve. Most servers that have a forehand grip tend to hit the wall 
at a low contact point and the action is only coming from the elbow. If I were to do the right motion with the, with, the, with the forehand grip here, my ball would fly right at the camera. So we don't want to do that. So if you get the continental grip and we get this nice full range of motion, then it all starts to come together and make sense. So one of the best things you can do is throw the ball. Okay, and we'll give you a couple exercises here. I start with my elbow in the back, I extend, and now you can see that my palm is back facing the camera. It was facing the camera when I started the throw, it came by my ear when I was going forward, then it faced the target, and then my arm rotated to get the hand to face the target, and then it turned over and the palm faced the side. This is a movement pattern that you'll see in every high performance server when, you're, when they're serving that at the end you'll see that the hand is turned over to the side. Of course that happens after the ball is gone and it is a byproduct of the rotational power that you take into contact. But it's very important that you understand this. Now a couple of exercises that you can do to help develop this skill and replace this sort of pushing old serve motion is a couple things. You can do this thing called palm to palm. And palm to palm is where I take the palm of my left hand and put it up in front of me nice and high. And I take the palm of my playing hand and I have it face my ear and I go right at the hand and as I get there, I slap it through. So my palm is facing the target. After you've done that a couple of times, you can put your elbow behind. You can see the palm is facing the camera. I come around, the palm is facing my ear, the palm is facing the hand, and the palm is now facing the camera again. Camera, ear, palm, camera. That starts to make sense. If I did that exact same movement with my continental grip, it would look like this. It would come through, the strings are facing me as it comes by, facing the target, and then facing the camera. So camera, ear, target, camera. And that is the action you need to get built in there to really make the transition from the forehand to the continental grip on the serve. Other exercises you can do that just kind of help a little bit here is when I'm in this position, my thumb is facing forward, my thumb is facing back, my thumb is facing side, my thumb is facing down. So there's some different things you can do to facilitate and develop this rotational skill. Because the power in your serve is initially going to come from the body movement, and that body movement energy is going to transfer into the arm or through the shoulder. So I'm here, I make a body movement, I rotate around, and then that energy transfers through the arm and creates that power. All of these movements with the body and this rotation is not possible with a forehand grip. So you'll be trapped not being able to really elevate your tennis game if you can't get this continental grip in there. Okay? So very, very important you do this sequence of exercises. And I really recommend that you shadow swing a lot because you're really trying to rehearse and replace muscle memory uh, that you trust and, and replace it with, with a new movement. And the best way to do that is to practice and practice in slow motion. You know, almost everything we do in life that's a skill is initially learned in slow motion, whether it's music or dance or sport. So you've just got to go slow and feel like you get that action in there, okay? And notice how the racket's coming to the ball on edge and then it's turning over on the top and coming down. So it goes up and then comes down nice and easy. And the more you repeat that pattern, it's starting to make sense, your muscles are starting to trust it, feel it, and then it starts to really be something that you can trust when you begin to serve. So rehearse this a lot, rehearse it, and maybe you can film it, um, or you can get in front of a mirror, but watch yourself do it because you'll start to see intuitively what appears to make sense versus that which does not make sense. So after you've been rehearsing and then you start to play the ball, it's still gonna be tricky. And the reason for that is that the racket strings aren't gonna face the target until you play the ball. And that's one of the other difficult things. When you're using a continental grip, the strings are not facing the target until you get to the ball. Where with the forehand grip, the strings are facing the target the whole time. And you just have to really trust yourself and don't worry about where the ball's going. Make sure you get out and practice. But more than likely what's gonna happen if you're able to, to hold the continental grip and sustain that hold through the swing, more than likely what's gonna happen is you're gonna put balls on the side like that. And if you do that and, they, and you slice them off, you're on track. So keep the grip. Um, that's gonna happen uh, for a little while, but what's gonna happen over time is you're gonna start to instinctively not slice so much. The ball's gonna start to get a little bit closer to the court 
and then eventually it's going to be heading in the direction of the court. And that little transition can happen in less, less than 30 minutes, but you've got to stick with the grip and really work on it. Now, if you struggle with that, what you can do is you can just simply come up and touch the ball and stop. Now, that's not intuitive either because we're always told to follow through, follow through on everything. But there are skills that are learned and things that you can learn by stopping on the contact. So if you just come up and you rotate and you touch it and you stop, you're going to start to get the feel of how to rotate into the ball. That's going to help you quite a bit. So let me go ahead and give you an example of what I'd like you to try to do. And again, that's simply coming up, keeping the grip, and trying to square your strings to the target and really try to stall as you touch the ball. And you're not going to try to hit it hard. You're just simply trying to execute and get that feel right there. On edge and stop, okay? Like that. And that's going to help you activate that rotation that you need to take that excessive spin off the ball and get control over the direction of the ball all the while using the continental grip and developing the motion that's ultimately going to give you the best possibility for power and control on your serve. You know, as a final thought, this is one of the more difficult transitions and skill developments in tennis. So take your time and be patient, but realize that the end goal is to develop a, a motion that gives you the most potential to achieve your full potential as a tennis player. And that the forehand grip is so limiting that it, you really will have difficulty achieving a, a really high level or fun level of recreational tennis. The continental grip will allow you to generate more racketed speed that you can use for ball speed. You can also use it for different spins that are gonna make serving a lot more fun and make it a really fun, confident part of your game. And the rest of your game will actually follow your serve. So take your time, work on these progressions, work on these skills, and get that motion so that it really has a professional quality to it and really get out there and have fun and enjoy your game with this skill. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson. I hope you'll take these ideas to the court, work on your skills, and develop your serve into the weapon that you really like to have to become the best tennis player you can be. Please give us a like, uh, leave your comments down below. I always respond to the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. And if you want to learn more about how to develop a professional quality serve, you can click on the link in the description down below and get my free course on how to develop a professional quality serve. And I cover the five key things you really need to master to achieve your full potential. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson, and we'll see you in the next video.